So this is how I would define someone that is good or is experienced at coin collecting. A great coin collector, or sometimes even a dealer, it can be boiled down into two words. So for me, it's passionate. Are you passionate about collecting? And what's the best approach sometimes to find the coin that you might need for your collection? These approaches um, often come from a more of an emotional perspective or a logical perspective. And you need both of these qualities honestly to be collecting coins. You have to be a passionate about what you collect, passionate about the hobby, and it kind of gets you excited. It also gets you energized every single day when you go to hunt for a coin, buy a coin, put another one in your set. You also have to be tactical. What's the best way, the best approach to finding the coin that you want for an affordable price, but also understanding and knowing what's tough to run into. What's the coin that you do need to pay a lot of money for, even if it looks like a more common or average coin to someone that is not as studied as you are, right? And so sometimes I can find people that are super passionate about coin collecting, but they don't really think about the best ways or best approaches to be able to afford a great collection. And then there's sometimes where I see someone that's completely tactical, they're finding everything that they need the way they want it, but there just isn't any heart, any enjoyment in it. They're buying it maybe for an investment or something that they say, hey, you know, I, I want to buy this coin for the future. But sometimes you just need both. I think that's something that we've tried to pride ourselves on when we're working on our collection. I'm really passionate about something, Casey's really passionate about something, we want to be able to buy it not only to have in a collection for ourselves, but also how can we do it in the most reasonable way possible. And for us, most times that's being a, a coin dealer. You know, If you can buy something for 10% less or 15% less than the market rate and put in your collection, for us that felt like that was the most tactical way to approach being able to collect coins. And for our passion, we get to create videos like this. We get to show you guys collections that we bought, like the ones we're going to show you in this video. For us, sometimes, and for other dealers sometimes, this is how you create that great equilibrium. Passion and a tactical way of doing things. Because the greatest dealers are also the greatest collectors. They know what they're looking for, but they also want to approach it in a tactical manner. So we're not only going to show you guys a cool command collection we bought in this video. We're also going to show you some coins that we've been buying for our collection and I hope you guys enjoy. So I guess the question is where does passion for collecting come from? A lot of people talk about it from you know when you were a kid and you were looking through Lincoln Sense or you were putting back constitutional silver with your grandfather. That's something that gets people excited and it gets them attached to the hobby from a very young age. And people that are a little bit more tactical, they've been doing it for so long. They've been going to a lot of shows. They've been looking at a lot of auctions. They've been studying the prices, the market. And they've been talking with people that are experienced in the market, like people that own big coin shops or are the biggest dealers at their show that do the most business. And so when you're talking about trying to become a really good collector or a coin dealer that's a collector, a lot of the time it just takes a lot of due diligence, a lot of looking, learning, understanding, reading, and acting on those things when the time presents itself. You know, like when we equip ourselves with the knowledge of the market, what things sell and buy for, and uh, when we're actually presented with a big collection, we have to be able to put numbers on those items, be able to know what we're going to buy them for, sell them for, and know what you guys will like as well. So if you're wanting to become a better collector, I would definitely focus on um, those two aspects, passion and a tactical approach to collecting slash selling. So recently we reached out to buy a coin shop, the name's Foley Coin Shop in Alabama, and they said, hey, we ran into this command collection, we sent all these coins into CAC, some passed, some didn't, one got a gold sticker, and so they said, hey, here's the prices. Do you guys want to pick these up? And so today we just got them in and we have the honor of being able to show you guys the collector's intensity and excitement around commemorative half dollars. He had OGHs. He had thick, fatty NGC holders. He also had a bunch of rattlers. And so let's take a look real quick, talk about each one of these coins individually and give you guys a behind the scenes perspective of why we think this person had the passion and the tactical thought process when buying commemorative half dollars. All right, guys, the first coin I want to show you from this fresh collection is this 1918 Lincoln, Illinois. 
It's great mint state 65. It's got a nice rosy color to it. It's an OGH holder. It's CAC approved. The collector picked out a nice example. A lot of these coins, like I said, came from the same era. So the reason why I think um, this coin collection is so nice is because it's really just untouched. And a lot of these coins are submitted in the 80s and 90s. They're now available in the market. Here's a really cool 1940 proof walker. Uh, it's got a little cellophane, it feels like, or some type of toning to it, green and blue on the obverse. It's great. Proof 67 by uh, PCGS OGH holder. A lot of these have been cracked out for eights, it feels like, nowadays. This one is CAC approved and uh, has a cool look to it. Then we have this 1935S Texas commemorative half. So definitely undergraded, as you can see kind of by everything in the fields. Um, it's just very problem free, probably a six by today's standards. And that's what they were thinking, probably when they were looking at this coin for CC approval. And I'm glad it got that gold bean. And, uh, you know, we paid decent money for that coin. We didn't get the gold bean on it ourselves. And so we're going to offer it to you guys for a fair price also. Up next is this 1928 Hawaiian commemorative half. This one has a little bit of a gray matte finish to it. It's an OGH 2.2 gen holder. Um, it's CAC approved. Exceptionally tough to get CAC approved and there's not many OGHs that hit the market. So with a lot of these coins, you're paying for the sticker, you're paying for the plastic, but you're also paying for a wonderful coin. And I don't think the collector fully understood what he was buying or submitting back then. But now that the market's caught up with these beautiful holders and coins, there is a premium, especially with holders like that. Here's an unfortunate holder right here, 1952 Washington Carver. It's in another 2.2 gen holder, Mint State 65. It is CAC approved, but it has some big, huge cracks up here, little splits on the edges. And uh, unfortunately, these are super fragile. But as long as the collector had these coins for, you know, 30 plus years, 40 plus years, it's uh, it's bound to happen for sure. Then we have Casey's favorite of the whole video, this 1920 main. It's great in Mid-State 65, and it is CAC approved, another 2.2 gen holder. Extremely, extremely tough to find Blast White, and there's a lot of collectors out there looking for this coin, and it is super flashy, super beautiful, and so happy to be able to share it with you guys. Can't even pick it up too well just because of like I said, how crazy the luster is. Then we have this 1936 Cincinnati, another tough coin to see with a sticker. Uh, there's just so much going on in terms of availability in the fields for a hit. And this coin has beautiful gem luster. You could see that cartwheel going, and you could also see how problem free the fields are. And look at all that real estate out there. But excellent design. People love these, and they become a little bit pricey, especially in. About 66, 67, but that one's a nice affordable gem. Then we have this 1938 New Rochelle in the fatty holder. It is CAC approved. It has some gorgeous rim tone to the coin. Exceptional gemmy luster. Once again, with those cartwheels, you could just see circling the coin. And then we have kind of the same story on the back here with that nice little rim toning and stunning originality. Then we have this 1926 Sesquicentennial commemorative half. A lot of these come really dark and bland looking. This one is in a 64 grade, extremely gorgeous luster, CAC approved. I mean, just a phenomenal coin. Always love buying these, have to pay a premium for them, but I mean, they'll sell themselves. And that's kind of the coins that you want most times in your collection. We have a three Arkansas run of Rattlers. This is the 38D in Mint State 62. Nice white looking coin. Then we have this Lafayette commemorative dollar. So one of the only commemorative dollars and it is CAC approved and an old fatty holder. It has like a kind of gray proof like finish on both sides of the coin. You can kind of see how there's a disparagement between, you know, the details and the field. It's kind of like a, I don't know, it makes the luster really pop on the coin. Another coin that's kind of tough to find in an older holder and super original. But really, really nice. Then we have this 1927 Vermont commemorative half in an OGH. Very cool coin. All right, the next coin is this 19030 Morgan Dollar, graded Mint State 63. CAC approved. 
great luster. Tough sometimes to find on these New Orleans uh, date mints, especially this older date mint right here. Then we have this 1936D San Diego. Once again, just a stunning premium quality coin and has that great luster to it. And these kind of come standard that way, but it's cool to have that OGH and CAC approval. Then we have this 1925 Vancouver Commemorative Half. It's great mint state 65. It's got a little bit of a purple toning to the obverse. Stunning originality, great luster, great holder, and now with the bean. Then we have this 1936 Wisconsin Commemorative Half with some interesting color on both sides of the coin. Kind of has a goldish brown to it. It's 66 CAC approved OGH holder. Really love how just problem free and original the coin is. The last coin we're going to show you guys, the rest will be on AcousticCollectibles.com, is this 1935 Spanish Trail. Great Mint State 65 CAC approved and an old fatty holder. Can't show you everything right now, but these are some of our favorites. We hope you guys check out the rest. Hello, everyone. This is Casey with Acoustic Collectibles. I hope you are having a wonderful week. Uh, we wanted to take a break in this video and tell you about a giving opportunity that us at Acoustic Collectibles are going to be participating in. We were reached out to a few days ago by a client of ours, John. Thanks, John, for reaching out. John started to inform us about a young baby girl, less than a year old, Aspen. Um, the first four months of her life, she was in a NICU division of the hospital, and she got out for Christmas and the holidays. And at the beginning of April, so not too long ago, she was brought into the hospital. She was doing well, no problems, right? She was brought into the hospital with a minor infection. And upon doing scans, they found that she had a seven centimeter growth that they are determining is liver cancer. As of right now, Aspen has gone through one round of chemotherapy. Their goal is to shrink this mass to a size so they are able to do a surgery and remove the mass. We've been presented a few options. They have a fund out for Baby Aspen. It is on the website Gifts and Go. We're going to leave all these links in the description so you have everything that you need to be successful. The other route is John and his team reached out to Ian at Great Collections and they have established a Baby Aspen benefits auction. In addition to sharing this story with you, we are going to be putting a coin in that auction. We are going to be showing you how to fill out the paperwork and we're also going to be showing you right now what we're going to be sending in. So the coin that we are going to be sending in is an 1885 O Morgan dollar graded MS64 with a CAC sticker. It is lightly toned. It is in a rattler holder. Front side has Drew and Casey with Akusha collectibles. And the back has Ben the coin geek. A few years ago we set up with Ben at a show in Texas. And uh, we asked him, hey, we've got this Rattler Ben, can you sign the back? So we thought there is no better time to put this coin up for sale and auction than now for Baby Aspen. Do what you can. We're going to do the best that we can. We are going to keep you updated on everything that is going on with this. Some dates that you should know about. The auction date is set for June 2nd and great collections is wanting to receive all of the coins that they are going to be putting into this auction by May 10th. If you're interested in sending something in, do so. Again, we're going to be posting all of the links below, and we're also going to be showing a document on how you should fill it out. So all of this and all of the proceeds go to Baby Aspen uh, Benefits Auction. Thanks again, and we appreciate all of the people that support us and give to these causes that we mentioned. We are just humbled by this opportunity to shed light on a tough situation, on a family that needs us more than ever. So I would say for the past year and a half at least, we've been starting to collect seated dollars. Seated dollars for us has really gotten, I don't know, a passion and excitement for us to start not only collect more, but also be able to sell more coins to you guys. Um, you know, because when you see a coin that you really love and that you can get for a good price and you feel is undervalued and you get to keep it yourself, there's just something great about that. And so, like I said, we spent 
a good amount of time looking for seated dollars and in today's video we're going to show you guys the progression of our seated dollar set a lot of people haven't seen these coins either on instagram or even meeting people in person to talk about them and so this is a very special video because it's taken us a long time to be able to create a video like this where we get to show you all these coins and so let's take a few moments now and show you the progression of the seated dollar set so believe it or not, this has taken a long time for us to find. And the reason being is because a lot of these seated dollar dates don't come up very often, even at auction. And so we've been keeping an eye out not only at shows, but on eBay and auctions and reaching out to our customers. And we're going to take a few moments and show you guys all 11 of these seated dollars. What are something cool about them? Why did we buy them? And also, what's a little bit of backstory? What's the history of them? You're going to want to hear all this because it's actually pretty interesting. So here are some early date dollars that we picked up, this 41 and this 43. You know, both in the really nice, gorgeous, crusty looking original coins. And we really love those. And there also are these 70s dates, 72. You got two of those. One in AU58, one in VG10 CAC. And then there's also this 1871 seated dollar in XF40 CAC. And there are so few out there in availability to purchase that when I ended up buying this 1871 seated dollar from one of our friends that are coin dealers, somebody else said, I own that five years ago when I shared it with everybody. And they said, I haven't seen an 1871 seated dollar like this since. And so us picking it up, we felt like there was enough value for it, but also we we're really passionate about just keeping the hunt going and get excited every time we add something new like this to our collection. And so sometimes it's not necessarily how fast can I get it done, but it's about the journey and how it progresses over time. Let's talk about the tray I've been focusing on primarily and just it's been a lot of work to get these. So these all came from the same collector. His name's James. It's an 1859 Philly seed a dollar. 1859O seated dollar and a 59S seated dollar. And this one came from a coin shop out of Ohio actually. But let's spend a moment and talk about the 59s here. So the 59O has the highest mintage of 360,000. The 59P has a mintage of 255,700. And this 59S, which is the toughest, is a mintage of 20,000. And so when I was looking into why these coins don't pop up very often, it's because a lot of these were created, and when they were created, they were instantly shipped to China, and they ended up melting a lot of these down in China. And so in regards to the 1859 seated dollar date, a lot of these just don't come up very often just because a lot of them don't actually exist any longer. And so there's only a few hundred that are known to exist in the 59Ps, and there's a few hundred also in the 59 O's. That's kind of the more common one. But in the 59 S's, I was looking at some of these and they're about under 100. And this one is an XF45 plus outstanding coin. But let's move down to the Civil War dates here. We have the 1863 in VG10 and the 1864 in G4. So I ended up finding this one on eBay for I think around a thousand bucks. I think the last few that I've sold have been from 800 to 900, but getting CAC approval on a coin with that much history, that much things going on with it, it's heavily circulated. I thought it was a great buy at a thousand bucks. This 1863 in VG10 CAC, super original, nice looking coin, exceedingly tough in any grade. And so getting that one CAC approved from our friend John in California, these were all really exciting stories, but also really exciting coins that we were able to set back. And so this is just a little bit of a tidbit of our collection. This is what keeps us passionate, but also keeps us tactical. How can we find coins like this for us, but also how can we buy other collections that we're not necessarily uh, collectors of, and how can we pass that on to collectors? And so being a coin dealer is such an honor, and we're so thankful that you guys support us. And uh, this is just a little bit of part of our personal collection, like we said. If you guys enjoy videos like this, Make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on this collection and the coins we showed off today, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.